Healthcare is yet another area where technology meets human need. Dr. Neil Cassell is the founder and chairman of the Focused Ultrasound Foundation. The former co-chair of neurosurgery at the University of Virginia, he's published over 500 scientific papers and received over $30 million in grants from NIH. Dr. Cassell, welcome to Tech Nation. Thank you. Thrilled to be here. We're familiar with traditional surgery. This is a different surgical technique. What is focused ultrasound? So it's, it's more than surgery. So focused ultrasound is an early stage, totally non-invasive therapeutic technology that is a game-changing alternative, highly disruptive alternative to traditional surgery, radiation therapy, and drug delivery. And it has the potential to transform the treatment of a whole variety of serious medical disorders and thereby improve the lives of millions of people around the world. You spent a career being a surgeon. How is this different than what you typically would have done? Well, in terms of being a surgeon, I have to tell you that the type of neurosurgery I did was the best job in the world. Okay. There was no no greater privilege and nothing was more enjoyable than being able to take care of these desperately ill patients. But in my practice, which was very large and it involved sort of uh, vascular problems in the brain and benign tumors of the brain, I would affect in the hundreds of lives per year. And I say affect because sometimes they d- things didn't go as well as you would like. The research that I've been doing starting in 1962 affects in the thousands of patients per year. Focused ultrasound, if it achieves its potential, will affect in the hundreds of thousands or millions of patients per year. So there's a tremendous satisfaction, the privilege of being involved in a revolution in therapy that could affect millions of patients. But it's not as much fun, I have to tell you, as operating and caring for individual patients. So how does it work? How does focused ultrasound work? So the way focused ultrasound works is analogous to using a magnifying glass and focusing beams of light on a point and burn a hole in a leaf. But with focused ultrasound, instead of using an optical lens to focus beams of light, we use an acoustic lens to focus multiple beams of ultrasound energy on a point deep in the body with a high degree of precision and accuracy, sparing the adjacent normal tissue. And where each of the individual beams goes through the tissue, it has no effect. But at that focal point where all the beams converge, just like where the beams of light converge, it, focused ultrasound has a, a 18 mechanisms of action of how it interacts with tissue. And that includes the ability to destroy tissue, to deliver drugs in extremely high concentration, precisely to the point in the body where they're needed, and thereby minimizing the systemic c- complications or side effects. Um, stimulating the body's immune response to malignant tumors and facilitating or augmenting the effectiveness of the new immuno-oncology drugs and so on. There's 18 now that we understand. Ten years ago, we understood three. The fact that there are so many different mechanisms of action produces the possibility or creates the possibility to treat a whole variety of serious medical disorders. How did you become aware of focused ultrasound? So, uh, around 12 years ago, I had been casting about for a solution to treat some of my patients who had tumors in the brain that were surgically inaccessible or tumors that had maxed out on surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy, and there was nothing, nothing left. So I was looking around for a non-invasive or a minimally invasive approach for these otherwise untreatable tumors. At the same time, I was using ultrasound in the laboratory to measure blood flow in the brain. And I can remember specifically where I was driving home from the hospital, the specific location in the moment when I said, Eureka, I'll bet we could use focused ultra, or use ultrasound ultrasound 
somehow to treat these otherwise untreatable tumors. And I got really excited because I understood that if this would work, the potential was enormous. And I said to myself, you know, I've been doing research since 1962. Finally, I have a Nobel Prize winning idea. And I raced home and I went to the internet and lo and behold, it was a Nobel Prize winning idea. It just wasn't mine. <laughs> okay. So sorry to hear so, that. <laughs> it was very, very disappointing. It was a great 10 minutes. <laughs> it was a great 10 minutes, right? Yeah. You know, I was thinking about all that Swedish money. But anyhow. <laughs> so then I, I did some research and figured out who was uh, involved in the field. And then I brought together some people in Charlottesville and it took off. Was the technology in place at that time for this focused ultrasound? It, yeah, it had been – it was It was even earlier stage, obviously. It was 12, 11, 12, 13 years ago, and a lot has changed since then, but there was enough. And could you immediately use it, for instance, in operations on the brain? I mean, we've got to have some approvals from the government. No, right? no. The, the, it's so, so today, I mean, this is, we have to put it in context. When I, I first got involved with focused ultrasound, there were three indications in various stages of research and development. One was pain from bone metastasis, one was prostate cancer, and one was treatment of uterine fibroids. Today, there are more than 100. So, you know, the field is growing very, very rapidly. Uh, and the brain indications have come on really strong recently, and they, they include, again, early stage research for the most part of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, OCD and depression, epilepsy, and brain tumors when you look at the brain. And it's achieved FDA approval for five indications, uh, including essential tremor, which is a cousin of Parkinson's disease. That's in the U.S. Of the uh, of the hundred altogether, twenty three have achieved regulatory approval. The other eighteen in Europe and in Asia. What was it like the first time you said, "Okay, we're going to do this on a real living human person"? Well, it was. It, it was really, really scary for us. We at the foundation funded, organized, and funded the, the research project that was at the University of Virginia. So it was scary for us. But can you imagine the courage of the first patient who put his head into the machine? And fortunately, he, this, it was a man who was disabled by a central tremor. He couldn't button his shirt. He couldn't tie his shoes. He couldn't hold a cup of coffee. He went into the machine and came out cured. And the the team <laughs> – No. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, and he came out and he said, this is a miracle. And the team of engineers and physicians and scientists that were there, it was, it was just, you know, indescribable. Can you imagine if it hadn't worked or if it had created oh. a complication? It would, that would have been the end, <laughs> right? Anyhow, very, very exciting. You mentioned the foundation. Let's talk about that. When did you create that? Created the foundation in October of 2006. And the mission of the foundation is to shorten the time that it takes for a technology focused ultrasound to go from laboratory research to widespread patient treatment. Our goal is to accelerate, to be the catalyst for accelerating the development and adoption of this technology. Unfortunately, for virtually all new therapeutic technologies, the evolution from concept to widespread adoption as a mainstream standard of care is a glacial process that often takes decades. So we understood that if we could shave years off of this, it would reduce unnecessary death and disability and suffering for countless people, saving time, saving lives. So the foundation is a tax-exempt organization, and we engage in a variety of activities that overcome barriers and take advantage of opportunities to shorten the time. As everyday listeners, we say, well, we want it. We want it now if we have a problem or loved ones have a problem. What kind of challenge do you face with the adoption of such a technology? The, the challenges are enormous. 
Uh, first of all, the process is extremely complicated and, large, and involves a large number of very difficult steps, like you know, d- development of the technology, testing of the technology, uh, preclinical laboratory studies, clinical trials, getting regulatory approval from the FDA, getting insurance companies to cover it, getting patients to be aware of it, getting physicians to be aware of it, getting acceptance by the different medical specialists, and so on. So there's a large number of steps that have to be accomplished by a bewildering array of organizations that comprise the ecosystem. And many of these organizations have different agendas and timelines for decision-making, whether it's the insurance companies or whether it's NIH or the FDA or the medical societies. So there's all that. And then on top of that, there's a whole host of fairly daunting uh, hurdles that have to be overcome, lack of awareness of, and acceptance of physicians and patients, fairly uh, difficult turf battles between the medical specialists, uh, getting the, uh, the, the correct long-term robust scientific evidence of safety and efficacy that satisfies the medical community, that satisfies the, the regulators, the FDA, that satisfies the insurance companies. So it's a, it's a heavy lift to, to, uh, to get one of these indications approved and accepted. It sounds to me, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds to me like this would be a far more economical procedure than many of the procedures that we have. Is that, ca- is that the case? Absolutely. And focused ultrasound is one of the rare new technologies that satisfies or fulfills the holy grail in that it both will improve outcome and decrease cost of care. Now, everyone may say that's a good idea, but we have a healthcare establishment. Right. With a lot of investment, right, and interrelating parts of who pays what and right. what we've invested and in counting on revenues, this is problematic, is it not? It, well, it's it's more than problematic because it's highly disruptive. It's disruptive not only to referral patterns and practice patterns for physicians, but it's disruptive for existing technologies. For instance, it competes and and it will overshadow. Things like radiation therapy, the radiotherapy device companies, or the medical robotics companies. So there's a lot of, uh, of challenges that have to be overcome. How do you figure out what's a good candidate to investigate for focused ultrasound? Okay, so th- that is a great question. And what occupies the, the bulk of my time is looking at these 18 mechanisms of action and figuring out which one is likely to, tra- or which of the number, are likely to translate into new treatments, and that which of the new treatments are likely to provide unique value in terms of decreasing death, disability, suffering, and cost, and that's that's a, a, a difficult thing because clearly with a hundred indications already and the number increasing, it's not for focused ultrasound is not for every patient. It's not for every disorder. Uh, it's uh, it, it it requires additional uh, research and development and clinical trials and experience to figure out where it's going to be best applied. Now there are so many areas in which people are working around the world, uh, and you mentioned some. There are others in pediatrics, uh, pulmonary, cardiovascular women's health, et cetera. One of the areas that I I couldn't figure out just by hearing was how can focused ultrasound assist in drug delivery? There are a number of approaches, and I'm going to simplify it a bit. But one approach is to use things that are called microbubbles. And these are hollow lipid spheres, about a tenth of a diameter of a red blood cell. These microbubbles can be loaded up with drugs, chemotherapy agents for cancer, genes or growth factors for Parkinson's or Alzheimer's disease. And then millions and millions and millions of these tiny microbubbles 
are injected intravenously. And they circulate throughout the body and they, they go wherever the blood goes. So they're in every tissue and every organ. But the drug is inactive. Why? Because it's trapped in the micro bubble, except at the point where the focused ultrasound is focused. And at that point, and at that point only, the micro bubbles burst and release their pharmacological payload. I know that people will be interested in the potential for focused ultrasound with regard to their own needs. Uh, and I also know that people will want to help. Medical professionals will want to know more. How do all those groups do that? I think that if people are interested, the easiest way for them to get additional information is to go to the Focused Ultrasounds website, which is, and you can Google Focused Ultrasound Foundation. And the website will tell you about all the indications, all the mechanisms of action, all of the treatment sites. Also on the website, in addition to a section for patients, there's sections for scientists and sections for clinicians. So focused ultrasound is the most powerful sound you will never hear, but it's a sound that someday could save your life. Dr. Cassell, thank you so much for coming in. I hope you'll come back on Tech Nation. Be delighted to. Dr. Neil Cassell is the founder and chairman of the Focused Ultrasound Foundation. More information is available at fusfoundation.org. From CES 2018, the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, Nevada, for Tech Nation, I'm Moira Gunn.